The Raptors lose a tough one to the Los Angeles Lakers. 122-112 is the final. Welcome to Raptors tonight. I'm Randy Urban, joined by Jack Armstrong and Leo Rose. The Raptors struggled in the second, bounced back in the third, looking much like the team we know they're capable of being. But Leo, how did things fall apart for them in that fourth quarter? Well, kind of like what we've seen before, right? I mean, the, the defense, uh, the inconsistencies throughout the game by the defense, we saw the good and the bad. And they just got to find a way to sustain the good. Uh, offensively, you know, things stopped moving. Uh, we're not seeing a collection of five guys, you know, have a solid game. You're seeing one or two, right? And, and, and that changes. And you got to get that consistent, consistency offensively. But the toughness or lack of toughness defensively, um, you know, when, when the offense seems to go good, you know, uh, you know, Sam and I were talking about it and said that, uh, you know, when, when we play, if your offense is going good, you get greedy. You want the ball back. You want to score again. So you dig in even harder defensively. And it just seems that when the offense goes good, everybody just chills at the defensive end, and, and, and that really hurts them. Yeah. Jack, what were your impressions of that fourth quarter? Well, it's the same impression I had during the course of the game, and that is this team will have stretches where they play great. And then they just kind of zone out. Mm -hmm. And uh, to Leo's point, you, know, you could be going well offensively, but then your defense goes. Well, you could be going great defensively, but you can't make a shot. And um, I said it right at the end of the game. You know, when people say, well, you know, you're better than your record. No, you are who your record is. And teams don't win on paper. You win on the hardwood. You win on the court. And in spite of the fact that you look at paper and you say, well, this composition of players makes sense and uh, they should be, you know, three, four, five games over 500. Well, they're not. There's a reason why they're not, because for whatever reason, the dots don't connect. Uh, the, you know, the I's don't cross, the I's don't dot, the T's don't cross. And for whatever reason, it'll happen sometimes, but it doesn't happen with consistency. And that's, the maddening, frustrating part of this group right now is that uh, they just zone in and out. And mm -hmm. it's uh, hard to put your finger on because it's a different thing every night. Uh, but nonetheless, it's there. And guys, I'm sure Raptors fans at home are, are thinking, well, this is so frustrating because, Leo, like when they're zoned in, they are they look unbeatable at times. They, they look so good. The offense is moving. Um, everybody's sharing the ball. It seems like they're locked in defensively. Is this just a matter of focus? I know you said the defense is the issue. Is it, is it focusing on defense? Well, you know, hey, w one of the things that I've said about this road trip and recent games is the Raptors have shown they're not far off and they can play with anybody. But can you win with anybody? And that's the problem right now. You know, you're, you, you have these games. You know, you should have beaten Denver, right? Yeah. Yeah, you should have beat Washington twice, not once, right? This was a this was a winnable game right here, um, you know, and, and so it's frustrating. But you know, I have so much expectation for this team, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of baffled as to why it's not coming together in a more consistent basis. Because you know, we know the makeup of this team, we know what they're capable of. And uh, for some reason, it's not the, the, the collaboration isn't getting over the hump. Mm -hmm. and, and frustrating again for the Raptors because they they had some great performances. Jack OG was unbelievable tonight. He was unbelievable on both ends. Yeah, and uh, you know, you look at this trip. He's had to put a lot of hard work in, uh, you know, on both ends, and that's tiring. And uh, you know you got to be a special athlete to have the kind of fitness level to hold up, give that kind of level on defense and still be a, a really good offensive player. Mm -hmm. And tonight he was, he was so stellar. He was so efficient, so good tonight. And uh, to me, that was a, a big, big part of, uh, you know, getting off to a good start and, and more importantly, keeping, keeping Anthony Davis under control. Yeah, Jack or uh, Leo, I, I love the way that they played Anthony Davis. They really took him out of the game. And unfortunately, you know, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers bench was was outstanding tonight. D'Angelo Russell, it seem, seemingly hit every big shot after every big shot tonight. 
Well, you know, he can make a big difference to this team. And think about yeah. it. It's not just, you know, Anthony Davis, a non-factor in this game. You don't have LeBron in this game. And uh, you can see that that trade will – the trades that they made to salvage this season have been great. They brought mm-hmm. in shooting. They brought in intensity. They brought in defense. Uh, and it's made a huge difference. And uh, a healthy D'Angelo Russell can make a difference. And, and, and uh, you know, I had this thought as well. You know, LeBron's out right now. And uh, hopefully the severity of his injury is not, you know, a big deal. Uh, they're just being cautious and making sure he's okay. But, you know, sometimes things happen for a reason or a blessing in disguise. If mm-hmm. this team can come together, win games, continue to get better, LeBron comes in and now he's also well-rested for a postseason run. Uh, that could work out well for the team if they continue to, continue to grow in the right direction. So then, Jack, how far can this Laker team go? How good are they? How good can they be? Uh, well, you know, not based upon what Anthony Davis did tonight, but what he did on the previous four games. Yeah. If you have a healthy LeBron and you have this second unit playing with the kind of juice that they played with, uh, they're a dangerous opponent because the Davis and James are obviously two of the great players we have in our league. And uh, so you got to be concerned with that, you know, it's a tough question, honestly, to answer, Randy, because mm-hmm. you can't really answer it until you know who the matchups are head-to-head. You know, like, are you playing in a play-in? Who do you play? Where do you have to play? If you're playing in an actual series, who are you playing? Do you have home court? Or do they have home court? Uh, spacing out of games, uh, particular matchups in that series. But I will say that if they're healthy, uh, the other team is not going to be real comfortable with the fact that they got to play them. Yeah, I, if I'm in the West, I'm not looking forward to playing this Laker team if they're healthy, just based on, you know, the personnel that they have. And then they add D'Angelo Russell, who, who as you mentioned, Jack, has this great stage presence, wants those shots at the end of the game. Um, speaking of shots, Leo, I want to talk a little bit about Pascal Siakam. Kind of struggled here tonight. What did you see from him? Uh, just the same thing we're seeing in this road trip. Uh, inconsistency. Um, I think defensively, he's got to be better. Uh, there were examples of, you know, giving guys straight line drives. He's just too long and athletic that if he's focused to give any of that up. And, mm-hmm. and if he gives it up, it's a problem for this team. And then offensively, um, I, he's gone back. He, he's regressed in, in a way um, where, you know, he kind of went through the stage of, you know, always looking for fouls. And then he started playing through and just like dominating. And now he's playing looking for fouls again. And I think he's just got to play. He's just got to realize what he's got to get in that toolbox, mix it up, and go after people. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just seeing an inconsistency at both ends with him. And that really hurts his club. They can't absorb not having Pascal at a high level. Mm-hmm. Jack, is it something to do with the offense where he's kind of feeling out of sync? Or what, what are you thinking on that? No, to Leo's first point, he's got to do a better job keeping people in front of him. That's number one. Uh, if you were to chart blow buys, he's right at the top of the list of guys that get beat. Uh, number two, uh, you know, I just think, again, the assertiveness, the force that he's playing with. Uh, I just think in, in general, uh, you know, we said this, I don't know, it was a few a week ago or so. He's probably got the biggest adjustment on the roster when you add Jakob Pertl mm-hmm. and you add uh, – Will Barton, you got a little more depth now. You got guys that all want a little bit of the action, want a little bit of the touch. And for and Scotty Barnes wants to emerge more. Fred Van Vliet wants to run the team more. So I think the guy that probably has the biggest adjustment is the guy who had the ball in his hands the whole first half of the season, who literally dominated the ball. Mm-hmm. And now there are times where he's got to do things where he doesn't have the ball in his hands. And when you don't do that, and when you know now you're needed to do more defensively uh, because other guys are scoring, or you're needed to do more as a cutter, as a screener, as a playmaker, uh, mm-hmm. and not worry about getting 30 a night and contribute to winning in other ways, that takes time. That's an adjustment for a player. Mm-hmm. Leo, let's go to uh, Scotty Barnes now. Career high, 32 points, uh, nine rebounds, seven assists. What performances stood out from for, – what What about his performance stood out to you? Well, like, like the OG, you're getting a two-way player, right? That makes a difference. I mean, Scotty and OG get after the defensive end. 
And then uh, offensively, I just thought Scotty's aggressive. When he's aggressive mm-hmm. and looking to take it inside and getting in the offensive glass, he creates all kinds of problems. And then you can see the confidence that, you know, when he when he's in that aggressive mode, uh, he shoots the three better. He shoots the little floaters better, uh, mid-range. Everything gets better when he's aggressive. So, mm-hmm. you know, when we've seen Scotty turn it on like that, uh, he's a difference maker. He's a difference maker at both ends. And, and again, you really don't have to look for him. He finds a way to get things on his own. Mm-hmm. Jack, real quick, I know you got to go. We're winding down here. As we all know, Fred Van Vliet was recently fined thirty thousand dollars for his remarks about the officiating after the game against the Clippers. Do you guys think that there should be some sort of leeway granted to players who are unhappy with the officiating, like just a little bit more leeway, so that it's not just fine after fine? Like there could be a little bit more back and forth. No, no, no. You can't do that. You can't do that. Uh, you know, no. I mean, I, I look. I, I, I. It's not like I. I don't have a problem with Fred having uh, the opinion that he has and it's a free country and you're allowed free speech. On the other hand, if you're going to say something that's going to question the credibility of uh, one of the officials in the league, uh, you know, for the league, that's an image problem. And uh, you're, you're part of the league family. You got to pay the price. So Mm -hmm. uh, he has every right to speak out, but under the rules of the collective bargaining agreement, he's going to pay a fine. And, you know, there were some people that said, you know, that guy should be suspended for a game or two. Um, now, there were other people that said he's completely right, but I don't think he has the right to just say it and not expect a fine. He knew what he was doing and he knew he was mm. going to get a fine. And that's fine. And again, I respect that. And he, a lot of the points he made were very valid. Mm-hmm. Leo, last words? Uh, I just think you got to be careful, you know. Um, as Jack said, you know, he voiced it. Uh, um, but, you know, I, I think the Raptors as a whole has spent a lot of time thinking about officials, talking about officials uh, throughout the season, riding officials. Uh, you know, you got you got first and second year guys, you know, waving their hands and, and looking at the officials and arguing. And, and, you know, we saw that, you know, with Scotty. So I just think you really got to be careful at this stage. Um, you know, officials are human, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to. You know, if you're if you're a pain in the rear end consistently, that's going to have a negative effect, and and, and subconsciously that can affect the whistle. Clearly, mm-hmm. no different. And and you know, if there's if if you're saying if Fred's saying it's personal uh, with the official, well, maybe the official feels it's personal how you're acting towards him. So mm-hmm. there's always uh, two 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 things in this thing, right? So the reality is this: if you're going to spend time worrying about officials, you're not going to win. And if you ride the officials too much, you're not going to win. So, you know, nobody that ever complains about the officials when Raptors are playing hard and beating people, right? So that's the formula. And and I think they just got to put this all behind them and, and, and move forward. And we'll just, you know, we'll just go for wins now. You got to win. Mm-hmm. Great insights as always, guys. I really appreciate you doing the show. Jack, get on that bus. Next game for the Raptors, Tuesday night at home against the Denver Nuggets. Tip-off goes at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Don't forget, come by Real Sports. Be a part of the show as we live stream to YouTube. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.